Okay, welcome everyone <clears throat> to our digital dojong class. We're going to be going over Tong Sudo basics. Um, but to start here, I'm just letting a couple more people into the Zoom session as well. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just do a bow here to begin for those of you that are with us. So, Chariot, Tong Ne. Uh, those of you that are joining for the first time, uh, my name is Brian Corrales. I'm a member of the World Mudaquan. Uh, I'm a certified Sabom. Uh, my Sabom certification master level instructor was issued by uh, Kwan Jang Nim uh, Kwang Hyun Chul, who is the uh, president of World Mudaquan and son of the founder of the Subakdo Tong Sudo Mudaquan uh, martial arts system, uh, Huang Ki. Uh, today, we're focusing on uh, some of the basics of what's called Tong Sudo. Um, <clears throat> I titled today's class, The Basics of Tong Sudo, purposefully. Usually, uh, in all of my courses, we, we're learning a system called Subakdo. Subakdo is... Uh, really one of the, the leading mixed martial art systems in the world, actually probably the very first mixed martial art system in the world uh, established in 1945 when the norm was uh, to be very conventional, dogmatic in, in our approach to training. And uh, Huang Qi was definitely a visionary man in that regard. <clears throat> the first of uh, type of training that any Mudaquan stylist engages in is Tung Sudo, which is the Korean pronunciation of Karate Do. Uh, and so all of the movements, the forms are, are related to, to that style. Um, the way in which we approach movement, however, is very different from what you will see in most martial arts systems. And I'd like to talk about that. We're going to go over that uh, briefly. The first, all of our movement begins with what's called shimgong. Shimgong is our sincere mental effort towards our training. And that sincere mental effort starts by forming a picture in our mind of what different postures or combinations should look like. The way you can demonstrate your shimgong, that strong mental effort, is through strong shisan. Shisan is your eye focus. And then combine your eye focus, shisan, with proper posture. So making sure everyone that your back is straight, your head is up high, and that you're moving in with good posture. Oftentimes as we begin to move, there's a, a, there's a common need to kind of lean forward as we go into different movements. So making sure our body is straight, our head is up, and we have our good, strong eyesight. That's a start of strong shimgong, mental effort. Negong is our internal effort, our ability to get, gather energy to produce the technique, and that's through our breath. Breath control is an important aspect of our, of our training. So shisan, our breathing, and then wegong, our physical effort, is always related to our waist and what's called our tanjun or our abdomen. So our breathing, let's have everybody get uh, feet shoulder width apart. Just drop your hands to the side and we're gonna work on inhale. And as we inhale, we feel our abdomen expanding. And then as we exhale, we feel our stomach contracting. We inhale, expand, and then exhale, contract. Inhale, exhale. As we inhale, we want to feel our abdomen contract, and that causes our shoulders to round and our elbows to come together. So we inhale, and then we exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale with the left hand on top. 
Hot on Maki, low defense, exhale. Oh. Right hand on top, inhale. Exhale. Oh. Basic movement that we all understand and know, Hot on Maki. You can demonstrate the Hot on Maki by simply bending and extending your elbow joint. Or you can create that same posture by opening the shoulder. And as you open the shoulder, the arm drops. So here you just have one motion with the arm dropping, or as the arm drops, you can open the chest. At the same time as you're crossing, the other side of the body expands. So this part opens and forms the chamber position. So rather than thinking about the arms moving into the position, you're thinking about the breath creating a contraction of the body, which moves the arms, and then the breath initiating an expansion of the body, which opens the arms. So now we inhale and shoop, open, and the block is more towards the side. And then we bring the right hand up, inhale. The breath creates a contraction, rolling the shoulders. Then we expand on the exhale and open. Inhale. Other side, open. Then we have the Weigong aspect of moving our waist. Moving our waist, there's two ways of moving. You can move it in a clockwise direction, or you can move your waist in a counterclockwise direction. As you do that, you'll notice that one side of your hips are in essence moving forward, and the other side of my hips are moving back. So this clockwise counterclockwise motion directs my body mass to move in the direction of the target. Or if you're moving defensively, moving away from the direction of the attack. But the turning of the waist is what directs the, the movement of your mass. And then the breath coordinates the movement of your arms to create the different motions. So from here, let's try just the hip motion. Back up if you need to. We'll be moving about three four steps forward. Drop your hands shoulder, uh, to, to your side, feet are shoulder width apart. Back is up straight, chin is high. Left leg stepping, we're going to inhale. Bend the knees, shift over towards the right leg, and we're going to turn our hips sideways here. Inhale. That's the inhale. Now from here, we're gonna turn the waist the other direction. As we step forward into our Chungul Jase or front stance and shift forward, front knee is bent. Staying low, we're gonna turn our hip, continue to turn our hips, which is gonna drive my back leg forward because now my back hip pushes towards the front and that drives my foot forward. Step. Turn. Inhale. Step. Turn. One more. Inhale and step. And then let's back it up. So from that position, everyone just watch the demonstration of Hadan Maki, low defense. Let's try together. So here we have our right leg forward. Assume the hot on Maki position. Left leg stepping. Set. And then from here, let's work on pulling the hip back. So now here we're gonna pull the hip back, we're gonna turn and fall onto our back leg into what's called a hugeljase or back stance. Then from here, we're gonna continue to turn our hips. As our hips turn, falling into the back leg. Again, set. And then moving forward, let's try the sangdan maki, high block. So this time the blocking hand prepares on bottom. We inhale, hips turn, 
Elbows touch, physically touch, shoulders round. Back is up straight though. We're trying not to lean. Keep it straight. Then from here, Sangdan Maki. Hana. Again, two. Set. Knit. Now we're going to cross on bottom and we're going to step backwards and do pseudo maki, knife hand block. So here we're going to turn our hips and as we turn our hips, release the block. So here we're going to focus on the hip moving in the direction of the pulling hand rather than the direction of the block. Because what really matters is that I move my mass away from the attacker. So I want my hip to turn in the direction that's going to move my body away from the attack rather than focusing on moving my hip in the direction of the, of the block. Because the block is actually in, inconsequential in comparison to the movement of the body. So from here, okay, cross, front leg stepping back. Hana. Feel the hip turn. Inhale, contract, retreat. Contract, last one. Okay, then from here, stepping forward. Anaso pakuromaki, inside to outside block. Inhale, prepare. Hana. Again, three. Set. Net. Same block, Hujin, retreat, contract. Now we're going to go back. Little preparation. Hana. Inhale. Two. Inhale. Set. Horo. We feel the inhale expand. Exhale. Contract. Inhale again, expand, exhale, and contract. As you feel that in expansion and contraction, that's the opposite feeling of what we just worked on, where the inhale creates a contraction, exhale creates an expansion. The reverse can also happen. You inhale, expand, exhale, contract. That's what happens when we do a technique like the chungang gongyuk, stepping center punch. So from the, from the punching here, as we step forward, we want to open the body, creating as much distance as possible between the weapon and the target in front. So as I step, open. You see how I'm, I'm reaching with both sides of my body, creating this expansion feeling in the chest. At the same time, my hips are turning. They're turning in the opposite direction of what we were just working on. I'm going to hold my hip back as I push my front hip forward. And that's going to drive more weight on this front leg. Notice how my front heel lifts off the floor as my knee goes past my toes. Then I'm going to continue to hold that hip back until I have that controlled fall and my hip turns the other direction. The purpose of which is always for the mass to drive forward. So as I step forward, if I over twist, that's incorrect and that's an improper front stance. You wanna make sure that the front knee and toes finish facing in a forward direction. So let's try with this new way of moving the waist from our ready position. We'll step with our left leg. Weight moves into the right. Inhale, pull the hip back. Step forward. Complete the chungle jase and snapping the hip forward on completion. Hold the, the right hip back and push the left hip forward. Hana. One. Feel that expansion. The front heel is off the floor. Step and fall forward. Inhale. Expand, step, falling forward. Again, hana, pull. 
And like we've done before, let's move back now with the pseudomaki again. Crossing. And one. Retreat. Contract. Dur. Contract and set. And then shift forward. Step and punch. Expand. And punch. Expand. And punch. And then cross. And retreat. Cross. Retreat. Cross. Retreat. Forward. Punch. Tur. Careful about doing something like this. This wavy motion. We're going to keep everything still. No extra motion. And last one. And bottle. Show. Rest. This is very an interesting concept uh, with with the punching that I'd like to relate. There's a, a lot of uh, a lot of you have, have trained a very long time, very senior level practitioners in very reputable styles, and I, I've trained in many of those. And I remember when I was younger, I used to train in a way that gave me instant feedback that my strikes were very powerful and that kind of fed my my ego really but but that was a motivator to to, to want to train even more some of you may resonate with this when you throw a powerful punch you just you feel that energy in your arm where there's this tension and this power that that's you know bu builds up in your arm and the punching, I'll, do, I'll punch in this manner from facing forward, and then I'm going to turn sideways. Some of you may resonate with this type of punching. And I'm going to look at it from a side view now also. And I feel that power in my arms, the strength of my punch, and it feels good. What I've learned though, the problem with that type of punching is that there's great gratification to yourself, but because you feel that power in your arm, that's where the energy is stops. It actually stops in your arm and that's why you feel that vibration in the arm, thinking that your punch is powerful when in reality, it, there isn't that type of power when you strike a target because the energy stuck. What you really want to be is more like a bullet, right? That, that actually leaves the gun and goes into the target, right? So as you strike, the power of the, of the punch doesn't stop here, but it goes through your partner. And I don't know if any of you have been struck in a way where it feels like your insides are getting hit. That's a master who understands how to punch in a way where the energy leaves the fist. And from a front view, it might look something like this. And from the side. I don't know if you can all tell the difference between those types of punching. But the latter completes the motion, whereas the first will finish here. From the front view, it looks like this. The second variation, the punch ends here. And from the side view, it looks like this. It, it completes the motion rather than holding back, which keeps the energy inside your body rather than releasing it out. You'll also notice a calmness in my upper body where there's an effortless feeling and visually the movement looks quiet. Where this looks loud and this is quiet. 
Hopefully you can see the difference there. Quiet, loud. So we wanna relax the shoulders, keep the elbows in, and just allow the hands to push and pull. Focus less on the punching side and more energy on the pulling side. And the pulling back of this arm increases the potential of energy in the punching arm. So let's all get into this side stance. That was a lot of discussion. Let's get the left hand extended and the back hand in the chamber. Then from here, inhale, expand, and then release. This hand all the way back in the chamber. If you have a problem with your chamber discipline, it floating out here instead of being all the way back here, it's because you didn't have enough emphasis on the retraction arm. Okay, let's try 10. Hana. Dur. Set. Net. Dasen. Yose. Ilgo. Yoru. Hop. Kiha. You'll notice that feels better on the joints, especially uh, those of us that, that are more in the adult ages than the kid ages, right? Um, you're going to feel that relief in the joints. Okay, now let's try two punches. Hana. Keep it quiet. Tul. Set. Net. Dasik. Another common mistake that I see is turning the fist over too soon. As you turn the fist over too soon, you'll notice that the fist drops, the elbow comes out, and then the punch comes up. In a more full speed, it looks like this. And in slow motion, you can tell how that's not a correct way to punch. So be cautious of this type of movement. Okay, two times. Hana. Dur. Wait longer to turn the punch over. Set. Kiha. Kiha. Toro. Inhale. And show. Turn, fix your dough block. Very good, everyone. Continue. So I just actually looked in the YouTube live chat and, and noticed that there was some uh, feedback of, of exactly what I was talking about and that self-gratification of, of that type of movement. But getting rid of ego, hopefully all of you felt the added potential for power, though you might not feel more power yet, but the potential for power and how it's a more it's a healthier way of moving that will ensure longevity so that you can continue training for decades to come. So now we move on to the joki, joki or kicking techniques of Tang Sudo. That was just a summary of some of the basic ways of moving with our hands in Tang Sudo. Now we move to the foot techniques. When we're looking at foot techniques, again, a, a, a key principle is that mass must be moving forward in the direction of the target. Otherwise, what are we doing? The Sangha Shipsamse says, pay attention to the slightest change from full to empty. And it also says that um, we need to um, have meaning and purpose behind every movement. Meaning and purpose. So as most of us, as we prepare for any kick, will come up and then throw the technique and then drop. Come up, throw the technique and drop. But this upward motion is wasted energy where you could be using that same time to drive the weight forward instead. You wanna think about driving the weight forward 
rather than standing up. The other thing to prevent you from th uh, moving weight is you'll do a double step where you'll either step back to shorten your stance and then kick or to gain momentum, you'll step forward first and then you'll kick. But again, you want to make sure that your energy is derived only from the waist, to the center of your body driving forward to the target. So we're all going to practice here. You can be turned sideways or facing the camera. I'll be sideways so you can see my mass moving. You're just going to lift your knee up, Hana, inhale, and contract, drop. Keep the knee bent, drive weight forward, dual. Grab, down. Set, down. Net, down. Gosset, down. And then let's switch feet and try the other side. Okay, so from here, knee comes up, Hana. Down. Notice I haven't switched my hands yet because my hip hasn't rotated yet. So with all of our kicks, our hip rotates just like in our hand techniques. So here we just shift the weight, one. So our hands stay opposite, back, dual, set, net, dosset. Okay, so from here, we're switching feet, the opportunity, front kick. Most of our basic thrust kicks have four count timing. Count one is what we just worked on, Hana. Two, from here, we're going to see how my hip rotates. So notice that my belt knot is facing slightly over here towards my right, your left. As my knee comes up, it really doesn't change. But as I kick, look what happens. My belt knot turned to the other side. So in order to extend my leg, my hip turns, hmm. just like my hip turned in Chungdang Kong Kyuk. Slight turn. That twisting of the waist you'll find in every technique of Tang Soo Do. So from here, knee up, Hana. Push and turn. Extend the leg, pull, and down. Okay, five times, Hana. Set. Net. And then from here, switching feet. Set. Net. Key hop. And switching. Dolio chagi. Round kick. From here, the knee comes up as you shift your weight. But you're, you're patient on rotating the waist. Common mistake is rotating the waist too soon. And then you're out of that rotation. And now your round kick is a flick. More quickly, it might look like this. Okay, so this, this type of technique lacks power because the, the leg is disconnected from the, the rest of your body. It would be similar to me playing baseball and going like this rather than having it, the bat connected to the waist. So think of that type of line and energy with your round kick. So from here, the knee comes up, we prepare, and then the extension happens as you turn, completing at the same time, coming back in the same manner and down. Now there's a heaviness and a fullness to the round kick. Hana! Pull! Set! 
넷, 치, 헛, 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 치, 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 앤 포로 Last kick that we're going to demonstrate is the dui poro chagi or the back kick. Now if you think about the back kick versus the round kick, I want you to think about which is the real spin kick. When I do the round kick, look at where my belt knot starts. And now look at where my belt knot ends. How many degrees of turning occurred? Close to 180 degrees. When I do a spinning back kick, again, where's my belt? Here. Now as I do that spinning back kick, look at where I finish. Where's my belt knot? There. I turn my waist 90 degrees to perform a spinning back kick, 180 degrees to perform a roundhouse kick. Oftentimes with the back kick, students will overturn. And then it looks like a spinning side kick instead. And the technique will glance off the target because this thrust kick it now has, has a circle to it. So to prevent that, what all you want to do is pretend that you're going to do a punch with the same arm as you do the back kick. And that's going to prevent your belt knot from over twisting. And then eventually you can get rid of that punch and perform the Dui Chagi. So from here, Let's have everybody get our uh, get our left uh, right leg back. Key hop. And for this kick to make it easier, I'm going to face the same direction as you. So imagine me being in your class in your room, and I'm in front of you. Both of our left legs are in front. Right leg steps across to give a clear path for my right leg to kick. Prepare. Then from here, as I kick, I want you to bring your right hand to the chamber and left hand extended. Look over your right shoulder in preparation for the kick. Now kick with your right and punch with your right same time. Notice how you didn't over rotate. Lift your knee up, turn, step forward, step back. Again, prepare one and two. And back, set. Back and next. Back, key hop, and switching feet, right leg forward, right leg steps across, prepare, look over your left shoulder, extend your right hand, left hand in the chamber, left leg kicks, left hand punch, pull, step forward, step back, Dur. Prepare, back, set, eventually get rid of that punch, net, he hop, breathing, All right. We talked a lot. This class was jammed with information. 
But just in summary, remember that it all starts with your mental effort. That mental effort to try and create positive change in your body with each repetition. Imagining the picture in your mind and then trying to have your body comply to create that picture. That's shimgong. You can start by having strong shimgong through having strong eye focus in the direction of where you're moving. Nagong, the internal aspect of our training is breath. And hopefully you heard the breath and you felt the breath and you began breathing yourself through each technique. I see too many martial artists hold their breath, especially on the point of exertion in techniques where there should be a proper inhale on the preparation of the mo movement, which then allows for a burst of energy on the completion, which is the exhale and properly nourishes the cell during cells during your performance. The Wagong aspect of our training all focuses on how we move our waist. And, and what I found in my training is this is not only a healthy way of moving, but it's also a natural and efficient way of moving, which means that it's practical. It's a practical and effective way of, uh, of self-defense. Um, However, it does take a great deal of mastery of the body before you can become proficient. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed that. Uh, those of you that are on YouTube Live, um, we invite you to come to uh, the website dojong.org and we'd love to see you participate in more of our live classes that are held Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, we will sign off at this point and any of you who are on the Zoom link, uh, stay on as we move into the second part of our class. Um, this will be recorded, so any of you that would like to uh, review this in the future uh, can do so, and we, we encourage you to, to share this. So thank you. Everyone have a good evening, and subak.